I come in um, in the post-acquisition integration phase uh, and we emphasize that that phase really starts in the middle of uh, the transaction itself. Uh, we need to start as early as possible. And I'm coming in to work with all the different disciplines to make sure uh, that the tax concerns, the HR concerns, the IP concerns, the, uh, the commercial concerns all find their way into the planning uh, of the legal entity integration. First and foremost is what regulatory or third party approvals are required to do the transaction. Um, in addition to potential shareholder approvals, there may be antitrust approvals, uh, there may be other governmental regulatory approvals that are required. Um, so that's sort of the first step in structuring the transaction. Obviously tax considerations are going to be very important uh, in structuring a transaction. Um, exchange control considerations may be relevant depending on the jurisdiction. The biggest mistake is not uh, taking a, an integrated, coordinated approach. Um, I think, you know, in the past, you know, clients kind of hire lawyers and then they hire financial advisors. And the big mistake is the lack of coordination among, amongst the team members. Um, so I think that's the number one uh, mistake. Uh, in terms of legal issues, I think, um, you know, a lot of times taxes um, and employment type considerations uh, are not fully <coughs> taken into account, particularly outside the United States. If we don't communicate, if the business development people and the integration team do not communicate with each other, uh, there are misconceptions about the timeline and it's extremely important to really see what the business needs are as to when the legal entity integration needs to be complete so that we can work backwards and work with the tax planners how we can achieve the objectives of the team or how we need to work with a team to adjust the objectives as the case may be.